Good afternoon. Uh, today's video is going to be something a little different. We agreed as a group and three old guys that we wanted to occasionally do a box opening review of some historical item from the history of gaming. And today's option we decided on Thieves World uh, by Robert, uh, by actually by Chaosium. Uh, this video is going to be a little longer than a normal video because uh, we're not only going to take a look at the box set here, but we're also going to take a look at where it came from. And that was a series of books that were written by Robert Asprin, or actually edited by Robert Asprin, who created this uh, book that's basically a collection of short stories by various other authors, among whom were Lyndon Abbey, Paul Anderson, um, uh, Andrew Offit, some other very famous names from the uh, history of, uh, of uh, fantastic fiction. And uh, this, this particular uh, anthology did so well that Chaosium asked if they could do a box set on, based on the world. Now this one was originally published in 1979 and there were a total of five of these books that were published. The second one that came out was Tales from the Vulgar Unicorn which is the tavern depicted in the uh, cover of the first novel and uh, that one came out a year later in 1980. The third one came out and that was Shadows of Sanctuary which is the name of the city that the, the uh, inn falls in and where the stories are set, <clears throat> and this one came out in 1981. There were two more that were published, but alas, I don't have those in my library, and uh, they came out basically a year apart as well. And basically, like I said, Chaosium got together with the authors who produced some more information for this box set, and the various game uh, companies, and they created a box set that was usable for not only uh, their own uh, role-playing system, which was, uh, uh, a D100 kind of thing that they did uh, back in the 1970s and uh, they also made it playable with AD&D and D&D uh, back in those days. Uh, Chivalry and Sorcery, um, they did it with uh, uh, Fantasy Trip, with the original Fantasy Trip, which was uh, a, pro a product of metagaming but written by Steve Jackson who owns it today. Traveler even was done as one of the games, and Tunnels and Trolls. So there's stats in this box set for all of those different uh, uh, games and companies. The, uh, <clears throat> like I said, it's designed for use with nine role-playing systems, and it includes an adventure, a player's guide, uh, game master's guide, and personalities, which is basically the characters statted out. They also have a section on monsters that is statted out as well for the different role-playing games and they have a map of Sanctuary and referee maps of the maze which is one of the features that appears in the books. Anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and open the box which apparently is upside down here. <laughs> and the first thing that we come to is what's in the box, an explanation of the parts and it talks about basically everything that we did. Uh, three loose maps including map of Sanctuary, the maze underground and the maze. The maze was kind of the uh, the uh, uh, thieves quarter if you will of sanctuary but keep in mind the name of the thing was uh, thieves world so basically the whole city was overrun by thieves um, I'm gonna try and go in order on these books uh, so we'll set that one aside and here's book one a player's guide to sanctuary <clears throat> and you'll see it has a little bit of a, of a table of contents to it and you'll notice that some of the authors of the the uh, stories contributed to this so the very first article is Thud and Blunder with by Paul Anderson and uh, basically talks about uh, how things work in uh, Thieves World Anthology and uh, talks about uh, different features of the uh, the way the, the game system was created the story system was created and uh, the various features of Sanctuary itself moving on past that we come to the city and its people, and it talks about the city itself. It talks about magicians, working women, this Danzo, which was a, a special kind of a, I'll say a pseudo-gypsy-ish kind of like group. And uh, then certain famous uh, people that were there in the city. And then we have a map of the city of Sanctuary. So you can kind of get a feel for what uh, the game and the books were set in. And then uh, talks about the Hellhounds, who are a special kind of police force, uh, enforcers kind of group that uh, appeared in the books. And they have, again, a timeline, some stories about it. And uh, they talk about the individual Hellhounds a little bit. And then last but not least, we come to a glossary. This is the thinnest book in the group because it's basically just an overview of uh, Sanctuary and the kinds of things that are going on in there. 
So the second book is the Game Master's Guide for Sanctuary. And basically this is what the uh, Game Master would use to help set up uh, uh, events in uh, the city of Sanctuary for the players, depending on whatever role-playing system you were using. And so again, we'll have a table of contacts, uh, contents, a, uh, a how to use this book section by Greg Stafford, who was the, uh, the designer of this particular box set. Keep in mind, Chaosium had just launched Call of Cthulhu uh, right about the same time they were launching this, and that was where a lot of their effort was going. But Greg Stafford took time out to do this as well. So they talk a little bit about bribery, law enforcement, uh, some illustrations uh, that actually kind of have an Empire of the Petal thrown look to them. For those of you know, you know. Uh, then they have a section on the gods of Sanctuary, which play an important uh, role in the uh, books and, of course, therefore can in your game. They have an essay by Robert Aspern uh, and, and also one by Andrew Offit on the, the types of gods. Uh, there's an article on the sewers of sanctuary, and then there's encounters and encounter instructions. And one of the amazing features about this is that uh, the uh, city was actually broken up into specific encounter areas, and they uh, they could vary by time and, and day and all that kind of thing. So the upshot is over here we have general city encounters, and it tells you basically what uh, counter encounter tables you would need to use and what kinds of people you might run across, depending on, in general, in the specific quarter of the city. And then, like I said, they go to specific encounters, and you'll find things that are tailored to each particular district of the city. Again, tremendously helpful to the, uh, to the game master, and something that I think a lot of other city books especially could benefit from, because, let's face it, cities are complex places and difficult to uh, navigate for the game master as they are for the uh, players. <clears throat> they also have special encounters, uh, table number 11, and they have special area encounters for the, the maze, for example, which is uh, definitely a different district to the city. And uh, then the bazaar and the street of red lanterns, which was uh, pretty much self-descriptive there. Um, they have a, a, a book a section in the book on how to generate businesses in the city. If your guys need to buy a sword, where do they go? You can generate a business on the fly. Uh, there's a cutaway of Sanctuary, so you can kind of get a feel for how the buildings looked and worked and the tunnels underneath, and there were a lot of tunnels underneath. And we had uh, special area maps and so on and so forth. There's a map of the Jeweler's Quarter, uh, obviously a place where a lot of thieves would congregate from time to time. And remember, again, that this is pretty much based on a, uh, a thief-based game for the most part. And you can see that they've described different buildings in some detail so that uh, the Game Master has it pretty easily uh, at his fingertips as to what kinds of things the uh, players might get into. For example, having to burrow through a three-foot adobe wall quietly. You know. uh, in the processional, which is another section of town, they have a kind of a close-up of that area, some typical buildings for that area as well. Um, the west side, again, they have a, a, a small map of the area showing specific buildings. And then, again, they have a section of typical houses and that sort of thing for that section. Finally, the maze, which is, like I said, kind of the, uh, the uh, low-rent district where the thieves hung out and uh, people were jammed in very close together. So, again, they'll have a picture of the maze, and then they'll have typical residents, flat, uh, second floor plan. Uh, this is actually the vulgar unicorn, which features in the books in the game. And the Street of Red Lanterns, which is actually outside the uh, city walls. And uh, it, like I said, it's pretty much exactly what you think it is. And they have uh, examples of different kinds of things, uh, brothel, gambling house, and so on and so forth. And then they have the, uh, uh, some of the buildings that feature in the stories themselves, the Aphrodisia House, uh, Lily Garden, and so on and so forth. So again, the Game Master has a lot of useful information here, uh, Map of the Bazaar, you know, again, those buildings were pretty much uh, temporary. And downwind, which was an area that basically was outside the city walls across the river where they did things like leather working and other unsavory activities uh, that the local residents didn't particularly want to have happening around their house. Fin finally, we get to the third book, which is Personalities of Sanctuary. And you can see some of the uh, contributors to this, Dave Arneson, Eric Goldberg, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, Mark Miller, I mean, these are famous names from the history of Greg, Greg Stafford, Ken St. Andre, Lynn Willis, 
you know, and so on and so forth. Um, in this book, again, we have a brief uh, section of contents, and then we have personality sketches for each of the, uh, the characters in the uh, novels, which you can run across. And then we go into uh, various lists of minor characters that appeared in the books, <clears throat> and then we get an introduction to the statistics, and they explain how the statistics work for advanced D&D, &D, and, and uh, then they proceed to stat out the uh, characters that you can adventure with in terms of sanctuary itself and uh, obviously the D&D &D section is fairly large because there were a lot of stats there and we get to adventures in fantasy Dave Arneson's uh, version of D&D &D. and again the stats broken out and it lists what kind of things you can expect in terms of uh, stats that was a list of the hellhounds and we go on through all these things and then there are certain monsters that are listed, giant crabs, the sick and tear, so on and so forth. Um, then we go past that to chivalry and sorcery, another very popular role-playing system back in the day and still is in print. Um, and again, it explains briefly what it does and how they got the stats for the characters and it stats them out in terms of chivalry and sorcery. And there's the, uh, there's the monsters, again, the giant crabs and the flying knives and uh, so on. Dragon Quest, that's where Eric Goldberg comes in. This was the SPI attempt at a role-playing game. It was highly um, professional, the way they handled it, but it never took off very much in popularity, so it's, uh, it's one of those things that you have to go look for if you want to find and play it nowadays. But they've got them statted out. They explain the stats and everything, and here they've got them statted out for, the, uh, for, for that particular game. Then the original Dungeons and Dragons. Remember, we did Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Now we're going back to the original, you know, white box version. And again, pretty much the same thing. They've got them statted out in accordance with that. And remember, AD and D did change the way stats worked. So, and again, monsters. Uh, again, the, the flying crabs, the giant, or the flying knives, the giant crabs, uh, spiders, and so on. Next was the Fantasy Trip. Again, that was originally designed by Steve Jackson for metagaming, fantasy, or metagaming concepts, and uh, metagaming held that copyright uh, after they went out of business for 35 years, and it was only in, I think, 2017 or 2018 that Steve Jackson got it back, and that's when he published the newest version of the Fantasy Trip. But these stats, weapons, and so forth will actually work with the current version of uh, the Fantasy Trip because he was, stayed pretty consistent. And again, they've got them statted out, and it's uh, it's fairly smaller because there was only three characteristics in the fantasy trip. And again, we come to uh, the flying knives, the giant crabs, and this time we have something called a temple ape, which featured in one of the stories. Next is Rune Quest, which was the and still is, by the way, Chaosium's uh, go-to uh, fantasy uh, system. And again, they they do the same thing here, basically explain and stat everything out for you. And uh, this time they went a little, uh, a little further. They listed gods as well as monsters. Next was Traveler, which again is a, primarily a science fiction role-playing game by Mark Miller, but uh, is still, of course, in print and quite popular. And again, the stats will work for the, that are provided in this book will work with the current version of Traveler pretty much. I don't believe there's much adjustment that actually has to happen there. And then Tunnels and Trolls, which uh, was a very popular uh, uh, role-playing system back in the 1970s and 80s, kind of went out of uh, out of style, I guess, or you know acceptance. But uh, recently was relaunched by Ken San Andrea in a Kickstarter about uh, I want to say three or four years ago, and it's kind of making a comeback. It's one of the better systems out there actually, and uh, definitely worth taking a look at if you're interested in it. Um, and again, same thing go through the uh, same kinds of things. And then we have uh, a character sheet for Thieves World for them, which was a nice touch. And then the next page is scenario ideas. So it kind of talks about how you can you can plot scenarios and use the, system, the game books to help you get through a sort of a mini campaign. Then they break out characters by story, so you know which stories they appeared in. And uh, then Eric Goldberg wrote a, an article on time and strategy. So. That pretty much is the books of the uh, of the system. Then we come to the maps, and we'll do uh, we'll do these uh, smaller ones first. So this is the maze underground. That's the tunnels beneath the maze, which, like I said, is where most of the adventures can get started anyway, and may very well end up. 
This is the above ground portion of the uh, of the maze, and there's the vulgar unicorn inn right there. And then uh, there's a what they called in the back of the day a wall poster map of sanctuary itself. So again, uh, the map is designed to give you a feel for how the city looks. Uh, it was a port city, and uh, it was ruled by an empire that uh, was distant, but they sent a viceroy to rule it, and that's the source of much of the intrigue of the uh, of the game. And then over here you can see uh, different areas. Uh, this is the downwind area, the bazaar over here. Uh, the maze is actually shown as a blank square here because there's so many little buildings in there that it's impossible for them to draw them on this scale. So taking a look at that, there you go, there's, there's the maze. And then uh, over here is the Street of the Red Lanterns, the red light district, if you will. And uh, over here is the Avenue of Temples along the processional, and then the processional actually comes out here to the docks, but it's uh, basically all the same kind of area. And uh, the path of money, you know, so that's where the rich people hang out and so on and so forth. And then there's various villas off to the side that were owned by the rich people as well. So lots of opportunities for intrigue, excitement, adventure, all within the city and uh, all of which uh, could theoretically branch out into a wider world, but you would need to, uh, to draw your own maps and, uh, and so on and so forth in order to make that work out. And uh, that's pretty much it for the, uh, the Thieves World box set. It's worth noting that um, as games go, it was excellent. It was, first of all, it was highly, uh, highly descriptive of the same situation that occurred in the books. And um, the, uh, the uh, different game sets made it possible for you to play this game in a large number of different, uh, uh, different role-playing role systems, which was tremendously helpful because it enabled everybody to get into it what, regardless of what system they preferred to play with. And uh, this was actually considered at the time, at the time it was considered an excellent uh, box set and later on it became one of the better box sets ever produced for role playing games, again primarily because it addressed so many different systems and did it in a thorough way. Um, the Game Master system was pretty well organized as well with the opportunity to create your own op uh, events on the fly with those tables. Again, I think that those tables uh, would be useful in pretty much any kind of city environment and in fact have personally retrofitted them for things like City State of the uh, World Emperor and so on and so forth. So uh, it's worth considering uh, as a possible acquisition if you ever have uh, some money to drop on an old game. This one, you could do a lot worse than popping for this one. The characters are are well plotted and well statted for their different systems and they perform under those systems pretty much the way they do in the book. Um, they did a really fantastic job when it was all said and done. The only discrepancy I noted was that uh, the systems didn't necessarily always list the same monsters. So you find system stats for monsters in the fantasy trip for example that you don't find in D&D and that you don't find in Traveler and vice versa. So uh, that was the one difficulty, but again, if, this, if you're familiar with that particular system, statting system, and you have some examples to work from, it's pretty easy to come up with them on your own. And uh, in general, that was pretty much it. It was, uh, it was one of the better products produced by Chaosium back in the 80s, and uh, definitely worth taking a look at. If you like this video, please go ahead and like and subscribe. I apologize for the link, but we had a lot of ground to cover here. And uh, if uh, you have any comments, we'd love to hear them. And if you have any suggestions on other old games that we might be able to do uh, an opening and review on, by all means, include those in the comments below. Thanks very much.